With your patient seated and forearm pronated and supported on a flat surface, assess the available range of motion of wrist extension in radial deviation. Stabilize the anterior aspect of the forearm and palpate the extensor carpe radialis longus and brevis tendons just proximal to the bases of the second and third metacarpals. Apply increasing resistance along the dorsal surface of the first and second metacarpals in the direction of wrist flexion and ulnar deviation. You can also assess the range of motion of wrist extension into ulnar deviation. For this, palpate the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon just distal to the ulna styloid process. Apply increasing resistance along the dorsal surface of the fifth metacarpal in the direction of wrist flexion and radial deviation. For radial deviation, the gravity eliminated position places the patient's forearm in neutral and on a stable support surface. Stabilize the volar surface of the forearm and palpate as before. For ulnar deviation, the forearm is positioned similarly. Stabilize the radial surface of the forearm and palpate as shown to allow motion to occur.